All artwork created in this video is copyright Leilani Joy. Artwork may not be reproduced without the written consent of the artist. All rights reserved. Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Art Nouveau with your host Leilani Joy. This is my video art blog where I document my creative process and give you guys some tips and tricks along the way. So welcome Art Nouveauers to a brand new episode. Uh, what do you guys think of Art New Vogers? I feel like we need like a team name or like something for all you subscribers and um, fans and friends that follow my artwork. Um, if you guys have a better suggestion than Art New Vogers, I'm sure you guys can come up with something better. <laughs> I don't know, that's just kind of weird. Um, but tweet it to me, post it on my Facebook page or put it here on YouTube and maybe we'll come up with a, a cool uh, name for all you guys that uh, watch my show. So that might be fun. On today's episode, I'm doing yet another piece for the artist group I'm a part of called the Bad Apple Artist Collective. And it's a group on Facebook where um, all of us artists come together and each month we do an original piece around a central theme. And um, it's really fun to do and then we do an auction and everybody has a chance to bid on some really incredible original artwork. So this month the theme has been chosen to be Hijo de la Luna, which means the moon sun or child of the moon in Spanish. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the folklore behind it and there's a song written about it and there's this really beautiful story that kind of goes along with this theme that I'll explain. So before I get started on my piece, I thought it might be fun on this episode to actually show you guys um, all the pieces done for the auction by my fellow Bad Apples, and then I will show you my take on this piece. So this way you can kind of see all the pieces that are available for auction and see all the different styles and interpretations by all my fellow Bad Apple artists, which might be really fun, and give them a shout out too on the show, and you can check all these pieces out at our auction on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bad apple artist collective so don't forget to check that out if you'd like to bid on my piece or any of these pieces all right so without further ado let's roll tape so here's the pieces by my fellow bad apple artists depicting the theme of hijo de la luna and um, they're all incredible and so unique in their style and i really wanted to share them with you um, because i know a lot of you feel like you don't have your own unique style but um, a lot of times when you put your work next to other work you see that your own style really does come through so the basic story of Hijo de la Luna from the song version is a story of a gypsy woman who prays to the moon to give her a husband, and in exchange she must give the moon her firstborn son. When she has the son, um, he turns out that, to be albino and looks like neither parent, so her husband thinks that the child isn't his and ends up killing the poor gypsy woman and taking the baby out to the wild to leave him to die. And the moon then takes in the child as her own, and um, when the moon wanes is when she's creating a cradle to um, care for the child. So anyway, that's the little folklore behind it, and that's what I'll keep in mind when creating my piece. I really love seeing all the unique interpretations of this story and um, the different versions of it. And I just wanted to give out a very special shout out to Miss Candice McKay, one of our newest Bad Apple artists. You may remember her as being my first place winner from my last collaboration contest and we're just really excited to have her in our group. And just in case you guys were wondering, um, the Bad Apple Artist Collective is actually an invitation only artist group and I don't think we're looking for any new members at the moment but if you're interested um, please send your portfolio to um, one of our admins on the Facebook page and we'll review your portfolio in case we're looking for a new artist. So I've already started my background here and I'm sort of creating this celestial night sky and um, once my um, first layer of background is completely dry you'll see I'm doing some spattering techniques with a toothbrush and some um, slightly diluted white acrylic paint which I'm spattering to create some stars and galaxies. So while I let that dry, I'm going to start a rough sketch for um, the character that I'm going to add to my background. And I'm going to show you a really easy and um, helpful tip um, if you're going to be transferring a drawing onto a dark background, which I'm going to do. So once you're finished with your drawing, I want you to flip it over and you're going to take a piece of white chalk, just like chalkboard chalk, Crayola, or whatever you can get at the grocery store, and rub a nice thick layer of the white chalk on the back of the drawing. So this will be similar to the Sorol transfer paper that I use. 
Then you're going to lay your drawing on top of your dark background. Make sure it's completely dry before you do this. And then you're going to take a pen, um, a ballpoint pen with a, like, a nice rounded tip. A soft tip is good. Um, don't use anything too pointy because it'll kind of scratch. So then you're going to redraw your drawing, obviously. And once you remove it, you'll see that the white chalk has transferred the drawing onto your background. So this is really helpful um, when you start your painting. And you can erase it with just a little damp cloth if you want to clean it up a little bit. Um, I would not suggest, however, spraying fixative over the white chalk because it's just so delicate that it'll actually just disappear. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to then take a white paintbrush and um, outline my chalk drawing so that it remains because it's just it can just smudge and blow away really easily. So just sort of a guideline. So once I've finished outlining my drawing in the white acrylic, I'm going to show you sort of the um, process of building up layers on my painting. So you'll see that um, I'm going to first add a flat layer of white over the skin areas, and then I'm going to build up the hair, a um, thin layer of that, and then I'm going to continue to layer this and layer color on color and paint um, a more thick um, technique on this painting. On this step, I added this sort of eye band like makeup and I decided that I just I didn't like it and it just wasn't working for me and she looks like this bandit or something I don't know I, I've seen that done well and I just feel like I didn't do it well so my mistake is your benefit though so you'll be able to see how I actually rework this um, this is what I love about acrylic paint because um, you can actually remove paint as you saw me just do using um, q-tips and some um, of rubbing alcohol which I used very lightly and then on top of that once that was completely dry then I just painted white back over it so you can basically just rework your drawing you know this is not something you can do in um, watercolor or a lot of other mediums acrylics very forgiving and you can layer it and keep it thick and I really like that aspect of painting with acrylic Now at this stage you'll see I've really started to build up the hair and um, I'm doing some experimenting with acrylic paint and using mediums to get thick um, layers and sort of blend colors together which I'm really enjoying and um, you can't really see it in this this video quality that great but um, I layered and layered and kind of built up this almost 3d texture to the hair and um, on the upper left there you'll see that um, the paint dried kind of quickly and I got some cracking in the paint which I really panicked about at first I was like oh no um, but the more I looked at it it really kind of grew on me especially since this is inspired by the moon and she's a moon goddess it really gives it this sort of like um, moon surface texture which is really cool it doesn't show up that great here but it's really kind of interesting um, the texture so as Bob Ross would say a happy accident I always loved when he said that, there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. But continuing on, you'll see that I'm actually using some colored pencils over um, my painting here. And colored pencils actually work great with acrylics. I don't know if you've ever experimented with it, but they are very compatible. I do have a few tips though if you're going to try them. Um, I really encourage you to use um, high quality colored pencils like Prismacolors um, that are soft um, because the hard ones like Crayola or like they're just going to scrape your painting and they're not going to leave pigment on there so those aren't that great to use. Um, I also use um, a blender pencil which is like a colorless colored pencil which is really nice to um, blend nice ingredients and things like that. I also use a lot of warm gray which is one of the colors which is a nice blender on flesh tones. Um, the other thing to keep in mind when you're using um, colored pencils is be mindful of the direction of the strokes you're making. Um, because they can, they can actually give your, your figure or um, object some nice volume. So keep that in mind. Like when I'm doing um, the head up here, I'm going to be making round wrapping type um, strokes with my pencil. So it sort of gives a little bit of roundness to um, the, the face there. So keep that in mind as well. Also make sure that your paint is always very, very dry before you start to use color pencil over it. Otherwise you're going to lift up your paint and you'll be very grumpy about that. Um, so anyway, yeah, give that a try. It's also really great for tightening up little edges and things like that. And um, I usually end up painting some acrylic on top of the colored pencil, which you can also do.
Yes, 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 yes. Oh, no, no, no. Ah, uh, no, no, I do not want to pay a dollar to keep playing. Ah, oh, I hate this thing. Oh, hey, you're back. Sorry. Sorry. Just uh, caught up in the Candy Crush saga. Have any of you guys been sucked into that cult? I swear. They hook you in with the cute little candies and cute little things, and then they make you pay to play. I hate it. So don't spend your money on that. Spend your money in my Society6 store and get a nice little case for your phone that will that will uh, make you look cool to all your friends. P.S. Um, everything in my Society6 store, um, I have free international shipping until Sunday. And we have lots of new goodies in there, so go check it out. Ooh, like how I worked that little plug in there? Yeah. Anyways, I am almost finished with my Luna piece, and I can't wait to show you guys how she came out. Uh, before I do that, though, I have some new things in my Etsy shop. As always, I have new prints and some other goodies. Um, here's a print of my piece, um, Venus, that I did on a few episodes ago. Check out everything else I've got in the shop at etsy.com slash shop slash Leilani Joy Art and see all the new prints. I have my Madame Butterfly piece and I've also added, like I said, my Venus piece, which is um, an elongated print. Um, maybe pick something out for Mother's Day. That's coming up, you know. I still have prints of Alice, the Mad Hattress, and the other Wonderland pieces. And I still have a few of my Hate Ashbury limited edition poster prints, which you can buy a set of two of those as well. Don't forget that I also have a wide variety of small accessories from magnets, mirrors, buttons, and keychains. They make great little gifts, so um, come check that out. And I also have several pieces in progress, so I'm going to show you a little preview really quick of some upcoming episodes of Art New Vogue to get you guys excited, and uh, let me know which one you're most excited to see. So here's a little sneak peek for you. And there you have it, a little sneak peek of some upcoming episodes of Art New Vogue, so stay tuned for those. Uh, before I show you my final Luna piece, I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be back at the Hate ashbury Street Fair this year on Sunday, June 9th. So if you're in the San Francisco or Bay Area, I hope you'll come out and see me and check out my booth and um, we can talk about art and you can buy some prints and stuff. It's always so great to put a face to some of you guys and meet you in person. It's one of my favorite things to do, so come out and see me. And also, I'm going to be at Comic-Con in San Diego this year, um, but don't get too excited. This year I'm not going to have my own booth, but I am going to be helping a friend of mine, so I should be there uh, most of the time, and I'll show you guys where to find me. And I'm definitely going to come as Ramona one of the days, and maybe as um, Daenerys as one of the other days. So I might be in costume, so you might not be able to find me. But anyways, I'll give you guys details about that if you're going to be at that event, and maybe you can come and meet me and we could chat and talk, because I won't be selling anything then. But anyway, it'd be fun. I'm really looking forward to it because I've never been and I'm totally going to just geek out the entire time. <laughs> okay, now without further ado, let me show you my finished piece entitled Luna. And don't forget to scamper on over to the Bad Apple Artist Collective page to place a bid on this piece and give her a good home. And as always, you guys, keep creating, keep striving to outdo your last piece and um, experimenting with materials and new ways to create artwork. And I will do the same. And keep tweeting to me, Facebooking, messaging me about what you think about the show. And um, I will see you guys very soon on the next episode.